Okay, all you aspiring mod modelers out there, this is Milton Shoup, and this is GMAX 1.2 for the beginning modeler, video number four. In video three and four, our objective was getting you familiar with the uh, command panel, object creation options, and that would be this one, uh, talking about geometry, standard primitives, and shapes using splines. In the, in the third video we demonstrate how to build boxes, spheres, cylinders, torses, and planes as you see here. And in this video we're going to focus on building what I call the DNA of geometry, lines, circles, and arcs. And there are other options but these are the three that we'll use. Okay so let's, uh, let's hide unselected here. Go to open up this, hit the E key to zoom out or in, whatever. We'll zoom in a little bit more here. And we're going to talk about today the building blocks to geometry. And the reason why is sometimes those standard primitive geometry objects like like uh, spheres, boxes, cylinders, torses, just aren't sophisticated enough to, because we need a more complex shape created. And there's ways to do that with lines or arcs or whatever. So let's just talk about how to create these three and how they might be used. Let's use arc as an example. Uh, two ways, two things I can think about creating, using arc for is creating panels and creating uh, glare shields. So let's assume a glare shield. We're sitting in the cockpit and we want to click and drag move over here and let off the left click and then when we move the mouse we get a shape. And that's what this is all about. Creating a shape that's suitable. It matches up with the so in this case the glare shield we want to create. So it doesn't matter whether you move left, right, or up or down. You got it. Click again and that object is done. Now, if we wanted to add some depth to this object, we'd simply clone it by holding down shift key and clicking on one of those, and we get a copy of that, and then we can move that back to create some depth. So now we've got two components here. Uh, let's go back and select the first, and so that we can attach the second, we'll go to the modify panel and use the modifier list drop down and edit the spline that we've got our hands on here. <clears throat> and let's see if we've got selected faces on edge faces. Me, all right. <clears throat> now we can see what we've got. So now that we've converted this to an editable spline, if you will, we're going to attach either attach or attach multiple. multiple. Uh, the second one. So now we, what we've done is join this object to the first object. It is now one object. So click off that. Now, in order to get this to be geometry, we have to get one connected to the other in this space. So we add a cross section. You see the cross sections have been added. Now, now that we have cross sections, we can put a surface of mesh on it. We can do that with surface modifier. Okay. Now, we can't exactly see the surface right now. There it is. The polish are facing the other direction. That's fine. We can flip them right there. Now the polish are facing this. Now if that shape is too simple for you, you can come down here in Path Topology and change the steps. Two, three, four, whatever you need for the smoothness you desire for that. So that's how you go about creating maybe an uncommon shape. It's one way to do it. There's many ways. And uh, that's how you use Arc. When you're ready to get to, down to business with this, then you'd start, you'd go to the modify panel and convert it into something that's editable, like editable filing. But there's how you create that shape and we'll get into that more as we move along. Alright, so let's uh, just uh, delete that and uh, go on to the next shape we want to create. It's got to be a circle. Circles are just as simple uh, as the other one. You create a circle by clicking and dragging whatever size you want, then you can go over here and actually modify it to be precise if you'd like. Click in a 30 maybe. And then 
we've got the size circle we want. And if we want to get ready to prepare this to be geometry, we'll clone that, give it some depth, come back up here to uh, select the first object again, and uh, let's convert that to by clicking on the modify panel to editable spline, edit spline, and attach the other one. Well, boom, now we've got one object. Click off of that function. Now we're ready to do the cross sections. Got it. Ready to do the surface patch. There we got it. And there's ways to control all the same things. We've got the normals in the right place. We can remove any interior patches if there weren't any. Or when you get, use multiple of these, it'll create um, <laughs> uh, interior patches for each one of these. So uh, as if they were cross-section bulkheads or something. Uh, and then you could, of course, smooth this up or down, whichever way, whatever meets your requirements. And uh, that's how you create a circle and create geometry from a circle using splines. Okay, so let's delete that and go back to uh, K for, for back. Zoom in. Now let's create a line shape. If you had a really complex line shape that you needed help with and anything else was not working for you. When you join these back together, it asks if you want to join those last two points. Well, yes, we want to do that. So once you have that created, you can click off of that. And of course, we're going to want to add depths to this so we can create geometry. So we can do that by cloning it, moving that back. And then we'll come up to the modify panel and add a cross section. Oops, sorry, you can't do that. <laughs> Got ahead of myself there. First of all, we'll clone it. Then we'll move it. And we have to come back here and, and uh, make this an editable spline, at which point then we can attach the other one. Now that it's attached, we can create uh, the cross sections. There you go. And then we can create the surface map. There you go. Now we got seven steps in this. That's a lot of what's going to turn out to be a lot of polys in that. So we don't certainly don't want that. So we'll simplify it a little bit. So there's the shape. So there's that weird shape, and this is where lines really come in. You can also do uh, use lines to <coughs> to uh, create a wing root or a wing tip. That's pretty handy. I'm not sure if I have time to do that, but we'll try. Let's see, let me unhide uh, all. Go to front. Hmm. This maybe I don't, I thought maybe I had a, uh, had a three view in here, but I guess I don't. So, um, let's hide these. If you wanted to create a, a wing surface or a wing root shape, do the same thing with the line. Do something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything else because it's all modifiable later. later so, yeah. So there you go. It looks something like a, <laughs> a wing a root from the side. And uh, obviously after you create that, you want to add some depth. So we're going to... Uh, clone that and we're going to you can go either way with this I'm always going to the right here but now let's say that we want that to be the wingtip well obviously it's not going to be unless it's maybe a Cessna it'd be that large but most aircraft is quite a bit smaller we can just scale that down to something smaller but usually the, the shape changes too on a wingtip but uh, and then if we go back to front here, usually unless it's a swept wing, that's going to be up here close to that, and it's usually a little higher. So just as an example. Okay, so we've got the wing root, and we've got the wing tip. So let's go back and select the root, 
and select modify and we're going to create a editable spline out of this and then we're going to attach the other one <coughs> and then we're going to add the cross sections and then we're going to add the surface modifier primitive though it is there's kind of an example of a wing that uh, is a starting point now when you get into converting this so that it's actually modifiable uh, you know to your specs you can chamfer these edges and get you a nice rounded corner and all that's real simple it only takes a few seconds but that's an exa another example where you can use the uh, line spline okay so now we've covered all the basic uh, creation options using both primitives and uh, uh, shapes using splines so from those building blocks you can build anything you want I've been building an aircraft for 14 years primarily just using these items right here and on rare occasion I'll go to splines uh, like I, I showed initially with the uh, arc creating panels and uh, and glare shields things that are more difficult to, to do using the uh, basic geometry which is which are these things so uh, that's how we're going to get started and now that you've been introduced to the basic building blocks we're going to start getting to building an aircraft and that's going to start next uh, in the next video and of course we have to have plans so it starts with getting those plans in place and getting them exact so that uh, when we start construction we know that all our metrics are going to be right and what we start building is going to be the right size and in the right place so that's what we're gonna that's what this has led up to all of this now that we have things that we can build with we've got tools we got geometry to work with we can get down to business so this is where it gets fun now just as a side note I've been building aircraft for 14 years but I never talk when I build so trying to talk and explain when I'm actually doing things takes away from my thinking when I'm doing so I'm either screwing up in what I'm doing or I'm screwing up in what I'm saying so you just have to forgive me on that I'm not a professional instructor so all right guys um, between now and the next video try to uh, practice with these basic geometries and shapes and uh, just experiment get used to doing it get comfortable with it and uh, we'll be off to the races I'll see you at the next video. Thanks for chipping in, and uh, if you want, uh, comment down below, and uh, I'll get back to you shortly. Have a good day.